Hi, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. 582 here on the bench. It suffered the uh, effects of drinking its fuel tank. And so what is that? Well, the uh, up to 10% ethanol in the automotive gasoline that it's been running on has degraded the resin in the fuel tanks and it has of course, gone right through the fuel filter. It's gone, it's incorporated with the fuel. It's gone right through the fuel filter, through the carburetors, and been burned in the combustion chamber. We'll remove the cover, exposing the rotary valve plate. And I see this shiny appearance in this area is what I expect to see over the whole plate. I don't really see it there. It's pretty dull. And it's kind of dull over on this side here as well. So let's take it off and flip it over. And we see this is all resin right here. This is the space where it, it fits or corresponds to it. And all of this rust that, you know, you look at that and you go, well, it's brown, it's like rust. It's not rust, it's, it's resin. So let's examine this piston and see what we can learn. So the, uh, the four points here, it looks like the piston wash is normal. So this engine was running well before it started to drink its fuel tank. And then we see how black this is right here. This is what we should see right here where it's like, this is a normal color here. Uh, now, why is this burned here? And why is this all here? This is not rust. This is all resin. So when we, have, when we have a mixture on top of the piston consisting of gas, oil, and resin, and we combust it, the resin makes the piston ring stick so they can't seal properly. So the, then the combustion, the combusted mixture of those three items goes past this top ring and makes a deposit right here, and then it makes a deposit in here on the second ring, and of course the... Yeah, the second ring is pretty much stuck right here. So it's, it's already glued in, as, as I would say, resin in, glued in. You can see the shine in there. Uh, I don't know if it shows, but you can see there's a shine in there. So it's, it's in there pretty good. Uh, and then it can't seal anymore properly. And then the combusted gas just continues down the side. So that's what this all is here. It has a shiny look to it. Uh, and it's, it's resin. And we have some, it's, it's coming across here, and there it is right here as well. And on the other side, yeah, not as much. So we look at the exhaust side, which would be the hot side by comparison, and it looks pretty normal. Oh, that's, that's not that bad there. There's a little bit of discoloration there, but, you know, this is, this is the abnormal um, part where it's, you know, just completely coated. So let's look at the underside of the piston now and see what we can learn. So this here is the boost port and it goes, it brings fresh, well, we'll just call it fresh, cool, dense gas and oil, and in this case, resin, in under the piston. So it makes it, there's a few reasons. Uh, it makes more power, yes, but it cools. The, it's designed to cool the top of the piston and to lubricate and cool the uh, wrist pin and the wrist pin bearings, bear, uh, bearings better. Now, I always visualize how this works, but because of the deposits here, I can actually see it. It's so cool. I can see where it all went. So when we see, so we had nice, dense, wet fuel oil coming through here, and we can see that it's nice and clean here. It's clean on that side. It's clean over on this side. There's a nice clean spot all the way around here. And then of course, when it came in on this, this way, it's clean there and it's come all the way around. So to me, that's really awesome to be able to actually visualize exactly where that intake charge went when it was, when it was pushed through the hole here from the crankcase 
uh, through the piston, sorry, not the hole, through the boost port uh, when it was uh, after being compressed in the crankcase. Now further out, of course, we have more heat. So what happens is it all coked on here. So this is all resin that's all just burned on here. So that's what we see there. Uh, normally, when I'm in the bottom, I don't know how good the light is here, but there's kind of a little square patch in the center here. There's usually a little bit of coking here from the oil, uh, which is pretty much normal. But this is way too far out over here and, and over here. That shouldn't be there either. So uh, if, you, if you handed me the, this piston and said, okay, what do you think about this piston? I'm going to say, your engine, you need a new gas tank because your engine is burning your gas tank. So now let's have a look at the other one and see what we see on it as well. Uh, okay, started on the intake side again, and we see pretty much the same thing. Now, there's always, it's interesting because when I go back to the, this piston, you see where the gap is and the pin is, there's not a real perfect sealer because there's a gap. So a little bit of combustion gas can go down there, and it certainly has here because this is exactly the same. And we see the same pattern. We see everything is exactly the same. You know, all this brown resin, not rust. Um, the, we see the boost port is nice and clean right here, spotless. Because why? It had nice, fresh, wet, dense fuel going by it, and it, it kept it washed off. Uh, what else? Okay, we'll move around. Exhaust side, yeah, there's, you know, lots of indications of it on here. Do these rings move? The, the top ring is pretty crunchy. The second ring moves. So, you know, as that's what's happened here is that when we had the, the same again, of course, uh, we had fuel, oil, and resin combusting up here, and it's made the top ring start to stick, and that's where we, it's just downhill from there. So let's examine, let's look through the boost port and see if we can visualize where the fuel all went in here. Oh, before we do that, that's a little cleaner on that side and there. Now, the so let me see if this yeah, i think that shows pretty good so here we go our nice dense cool fuel came in here and the boost port is spotless just like it is right here and it went around the uh, wrist pin and the and the pin bearings and around this side where we can see it's nice and nice and washed off and clean whoops right there and the same again and then when it came in from this side, see if this, I hope all this shows, because this is really cool stuff. Uh, and, it, and it comes around through there. So that's the boost port. That's how it works. So it definitely cooled it. Um, however, out here, the piston was much hotter because you, you can see, of course, where it coked the, uh, the resin onto it. And again, that's not carbon. That's not rust. That's resin exactly what that is uh, down in the center yeah you know I, I, I can visualize that it had uh, when it was when it was running on on uh, gasoline that was good uh, it had a bit of carbon right there which is a little coking which is fine but again we see this over there and we see this all coked on over here this is all resin This all looks like it's all oily and shiny from that, but it's not. If you rub your finger on there, there's no oil on there. This is all shiny like that from resin. So we can see why the rings are not going to seat because there's, you know, they, they can't even get to the metal anymore. Uh, there's a dark um, little sort of a striation in here and then a rather large deposit where it's much darker here of uh, thicker resin. So that, uh, that's what we see on the cylinder. Well, let me flip it over and see what we see on the other side. And uh, well, pretty much the same. Very, very shiny. Uh, there's no, like when I rub this, there's no, no uh, corresponding crosshatch feel or anything. And there's, it's quite a bit darker down here where there's a lot of, uh, the, the resin's a little bit thicker. So uh, these ones will, uh, oh, 
And let me zoom in on this. And um, let me move the light. Oh, there we go. Okay. Normally there could would be maybe a little carbon around the top here, but look at the color of this. This is not a normal color. This is all this is all carbon, I guess we'll call it carbon from the combustion process of gas and oil and resin. That's why it's this unusual color. On the cylinder head combustion chamber, we can see that this is an unusual color here. It's all kind of, as I say, shiny. This deposits look really strange uh, because again, it's combusting uh, the, uh, oh, there's a little, oh, there's a little piece there. I can make that fall off. So the resin, yeah, the resin and, and the, it, here's all the little pieces right here that correspond to around the cylinder that we just saw. Uh, so this is just all this cylinder the same way. It's all shiny over here. It's very shiny there. It's all coated in resin. And all of this uh, has is an odd color uh, because it's uh, combusted, as I said, the uh, gas, oil, and resin. And we can really see in the squish area here a real different color here. You see this band right here compared to the combustion chamber. So uh, yeah, a real indication that this is not normal. It's so cool to actually be able to see and visualize where the air fuel mixture goes. So this protrusion or this deflector here is nice and spotlessly clean and it's deposits all around it. So that is really, that's in there for a reason. It's doing something to redirect the fuel charge the same with this one is uh, this protrusion. It's uh, nice and clean. It's got deposits all around it. This as well. This is nice and clean here. And you can see how clean, uh, clean and shiny it is. Deposits all around it. And this deflector again, same as the other. It's spotlessly clean. Been washed by the incoming um, mixture with all the deposits all around it. So these deflectors that are extremely important can actually see what they actually do because I can see the rest of the fuel flow inside the crankcase. It's, it's really cool to uh, to be able to actually be able to visualize it instead of just sort of imagine um, how it travels, the mixture travels through the engine to lubricate it and to, uh, to cool it. So my initial inspection of the crankshaft, I've inspected the uh, the clearance in the big end, and uh, it's uh, still within new specifications, which is great. All the bearings appear fine. Uh, I had all I had wa I cleaned over here already. It's a little dark right there, but I cleaned this off. I wish I had left it so I could have showed it on the video. This is the intake side of the connecting rod. That this is the side that coincides with the transfer port in the piston. So when the fuel is coming through the transfer port, this is the side of the connecting rod that it's going to contact. So just like this, it's this way. So there was deposit on this side, as I said, and this side here was as is. I didn't clean that at all. And of course the other rod was exactly the same. It was clean as it is on this side and then had some deposits down there. So I haven't checked the trueness of it yet to see uh, if it needs to be trued, but a good candidate to reuse this crankshaft again. So you've seen the deposits that uh, were visible in the actual port in the crankcase. Um, however, when we're getting back to the inspection that you may do on the aircraft, then here we go, right? This is where the rubber carburetor socket goes on. Then we can see without a doubt the tan that's in here. The, uh, there we go. There. Oh yeah, that's much better. So we can see uh, this engine is mounted upright. Um, with the plugs up and this is where that the wash from the from the idle so the idle wash has come through here 
and we can see it's reasonably clean here, cleaner because of the flow there. Uh, and uh, But we can see a lot of deposits as well here. And interestingly, whoops, not, a, not that much on the very top, on the very, uh, like the uh, spark plug side. And then we'll look at this one again and we can see, of course, the right in here where the idle goes, the idle has washed it off. And then we have deposits in here and deposits in there. So this uh, deposits in here combined with what you'll see in the, in the backside of the carburetor, um, for sure, it's drinking the gas tank. That you just saw running on the uh, run stand here at the shop that is the exact engine so it runs fantastic uh, it's a service that I'm very happy that I can offer really nothing leaves here without running first uh, so it's had the uh, hour and a half about an hour and a half on it altogether the uh, the uh, break-in procedure is done and uh, that engine will of course now there's a little lag here it's it's log on, it's back out of the airplane, it's flying around. Uh, if, you, if you're just watching this one for the first time for the internal part of this, there's also a previous video that I did, uh, and it's, it's like a DIY version where you can actually inspect your own aircraft. So if you've got fiberglass tanks and you're worried, is it drinking the gas tank? As I always say, <laughs> uh, you could actually do the inspection. And of course, if it looks like that, uh, when you do the on the aircraft inspection, yeah, the inside of it's going to look like this one did. And it needs to come apart um, and uh, in the minimum uh, clean it and reseal it because uh, the rings will be all stuck, of course. Um, now, clean it. Okay, so you may wonder what did I clean it with? Acetone. I found that acetone worked the very best um, from all the all the solvents that I tried, and I had like a sweatshirt material, something thick. And I had it sopping wet so that when I clean something, it's completely saturated. So if this is just damp, it's not going to do, or it won't do anything for me. Maybe it will for you. I don't know. Uh, maybe there's something else out there that's better. But the acetone works for me, so I'm happy. <laughs> Enough said. Now, um, a, please uh, like, share, subscribe, all those other things, especially hit the like button. Thanks so much for the time uh, that we spent together today and uh, have a good one. I'll see you again.